In today's video, we will be taking an unboxing and overview of this Gigabyte B450MK motherboard. So yes, this is a very cheap AM4 motherboard. It's a Micro ATX board, as you'd expect, which is what most budget boards are. And I only paid £51 for this, which is a really, really good price especially considering this was actually manufactured in 2022 which means out of the box it is Ryzen 5000 desktop ready so what does that mean? that basically means you can put any Ryzen process you want from the first generation up to the fifth generation and it will work straight out of the box without a BIOS update which is the big big selling feature of this motherboard for me so if you've got a Ryzen 5 4500, no worries, Ryzen 5 5600X, you could even go 5700X, anything you want really. Now there are some CPUs I probably wouldn't go to, because this is a basic board, but I'll explain as we go along anyway. So as this is a budget board, it's going to be very very basic in terms of packaging and what have you, but it's going to get the job done. We have our I.O. shield there, and I think we have, yep, we have the standard two SATA cables, two SATA data cables there as well. So here's the board. As you can see, very, very tiny Micro ATX. This is actually an even smaller sort of Micro ATX than normal. It's actually... Uh, I'll put all the details at the, at below. I think it's 245 by only 195 millimeters or something like that. So it is a very, very small board. I mean, width-wise, it doesn't come much at all. So yes, as probably most people know, we'll go through the overview. I go all over the board, basically, from the top right-hand corner all the way down to the bottom uh, right-hand corner as well. And then we'll talk about the I.O. as well right at the end. So we have our 8-pin power connector at the top here. And also, obviously, our AM4 socket here, which again, as I said, supports up to Ryzen 5000 series out of the box, which is the really big selling point with this motherboard. Now, the VRM is a bit poor. I think it's a 4x2 phase, but basically there's no heatsink on the actual uh, VRMs, which is a bit frustrating. But maybe you could put your own little fan in there, or even you can actually get some kind of like little heat sinks actually, which you can put on top of these. I have seen so you could even buy maybe a few of those if you wanted to as well just to kind of help with the uh, VRM um, call in there. Our uh, four pin CPU fan connector is up here fortunately there's not actually a second one as well which kind of means you're kind of limited to one fan for your CPU cooler rather than like a two fan setup one of those sort of bigger CPU coolers but again this is a basic board for Really, anything like Ryzen 5 and below. I'd say Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 is fine. Once you get into Ryzen 7 processors, maybe the 5700X would be fine, but certainly once you get to Ryzen 5800X, I probably wouldn't go with this board. It's going to be a little bit weak in terms of the VRMs and what have you. But again, basic budget board for basic budget builds. This is going to be fine. We have our two DIMM slots here, which I believe can fit up to 64 gigabytes of RAM up to. And I believe that will clock up to, well, it probably probably you can overclock it as well, but I think 3600 megahertz is probably the limit. And then we have our 24 pin here. Now, there isn't really much else actually happening at the side here. I don't even think we have the Dr. Debug, if I can see. No, it doesn't even look like we have the Dr. Debug LEDs or anything like that. So again, it is very, very basic. As I said, there's not much to this board, but... For a budget build, it, it, it will do, and like I say, £51 is a very good price for even for an AM4 motherboard these days. So, you know, I, I do think there is a lot of positives to this board. We have four SATA data um, connectors here. Uh, basically, this is uh, SATA 6, obviously, um, compatible. So, potentially, if you've got four SATA drives, you could connect them up, but I think most people go in M.2 these days, so really... That isn't really needed, but it's there if you do need the extra storage, I guess. And it could be used as a little sort of uh, server or maybe like a little NAS or something. This might be quite good for that sort of thing. So 
it just depends what people want really with it. Then we have our USB 3 front panel connector as well. So that's good that it does support that. I mean, that's kind of standard nowadays, but you never know with some budget motherboards that might not even be, not, might not even be present. So at least it's there. Obviously, we've got no USB-C front panel support, but again, budget board like this, you're probably not going to really need budget, you know, you're not going to really need USB-C anyway, are you? Or you're not going to use it, so not really essential in my opinion. Then we have our front panel connectors, obviously for your power switch and everything like that, so it's pretty standard. We've got a clear CMOS um, thing here, as well as a speaker connector as well, so... If you're kind of doing more sort of debugging and maybe overclocking, that might be useful, but most people aren't going to use that again. And then we have two USB 2 front panel headers again. So if your case does support USB 2 or you've only got USB 2 on your front panel of your case, then you can use that. You can you can use one of those two, two connectors there. Then we have a TPM sort of module connector there at the bottom as well. Um, again, no one's really going to use this, so I wouldn't really worry about that. And then we have our HD audio connector, our front panel audio connector there. Again, very basic motherboard this. Um, the connectors are all, you know, there's not really many of them. They're all pretty standard ones, which are there. But again, there's no RGB support at all. So that is something that you will have to think about if you are... Uh, building a PC with this motherboard, there's no ARGB support or even the old school 12 volt RGB support. So please be aware of that if you are going to do that. There's also only one additional fan connector apart from the CPU fan as well, which is here on the right hand side. So most people are going to put the rear fan onto that. You could potentially do a splitter and maybe get three or four fa fans on that one fan header. I probably, well, I, I think it would be safe enough to do it, but again, uh, most people are probably going to use like uh, the the case fans anyway, and most likely in a budget case, your case fans are probably going to be powered by the SATA power cable anyway, so probably that isn't going to be a issue for most people, but for some people that might be a bit of a showstopper and a bit of a, you know, a minus point of this mower board, and that, that, that might be a deal breaker for them, so... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it is a downside, I, I will admit. And then just below the CPU socket, we do have an M.2 slot, which is a really nice thing to see, especially for a very cheap and budget motherboard. Really nowadays, M.2 is so prevalent everywhere, and it's kind of what everyone's going to, that it is really good that um, we actually do see that uh, M.2 slot there. Now again, it does have one of these little sort of, um, it's basically not a screw, so it's, it's one of those things which kind of pulls up and then you put it down to hold in your M.2 drive, which is kind of nice as well. But yeah, um, this is only Gen 3 support, uh, so any Gen 4 drives, it will still work, but it will clock down to Gen 3 for your M.2 drives, your NVMe drives, because uh, obviously this is a B450 platform, which is limited to only PCI Express Gen 3, so... You will have to be aware of that. And then when we go to the next PCI slot, the PCI Time 16 slot, that is the same again. That's only a Gen 3 slot. So if you've got a Gen 4 card, it will work, but it will clock down to the Gen 3 speeds rather than the Gen 4 speeds that you potentially could get from maybe like 30 series or the 40 series RTX. So um, yeah, a little bit limiting. Obviously B450 is quite an old platform now. Although this is actually quite a new release of 2022, the chipset is like, ooh, like seven years old now, or at least getting seven years, if not, you know, around six or seven anyway. And yeah, you are going to get limitations here. So again, if you are looking to build a new PC, you might want to go B550 nowadays to get your Gen 4 support. But for most people building a budget PC, Gen 3 is going to be enough. So I wouldn't say that's too bad. And we do have the PCI Express times one slot right at the bottom there as well. So again, that's that's good to see because if you've got Wi-Fi cards and what have you, you can just slot that there. There should be enough room, the two slots for your GPU from your GPU, your Time 16 connector. There's two slots there. There's one slot which is missing. So there should be enough room to actually put a Wi-Fi card right at the bottom as well. And then obviously your M.2 just above your graphics card there, which is nice. So... You've got access to that if you do need to swap it out and what have you, even when you've got the graphics card in. So that's nice. Um, obviously, our CMOS battery is also there as well. But again, you're 
really never going to replace that so I wouldn't really uh, I wouldn't really worry about that and then we have like our North Bridge call in here at the bottom which is obviously all silent as well so that's all good um, but yeah I think we kind of covered the board enough now um, let's get to the IO as you would expect the downside of this board is that the IO is probably the most basic IO I think I've ever seen in my life but it will do the job and that's at the end of the day that's what we need isn't it so um, yes we have very legacy PS2 ports, one for the keyboard and one for the mouse. Some people might like this for things like overclocking and stuff, but um, really I would have just liked to see more USB USB ports, but um, it is what it is. We have one display connector, so be aware of this if you are going to use something like a 5600G or some kind of iGPU. Um, you know, one of the Ryzen chips that actually have is onboard GPU rather than a dedicated, a dedicated graphics card. So be aware that you're only going to get one HDMI display out. You're not going to be able to put two monitors with this unless you go with a discrete graphics card. So that is a big limitation and I think that is one thing that would put me off this board. But um, again, if you're using a dedicated graphics card, you're not going to need that. So that's fine. It's not really too much of a problem in my opinion, but that might be a deal breaker for some people. Then we have four USB 3 ports, which I believe are like USB 3.1, but again, I'll put everything below in terms of all the details. And then we have two USB 2 ports, so a total of six USB A ports, which is okay. It's a budget board. You'd probably say six is enough. I would like to see eight on every single motherboard nowadays. I think that's kind of my minimum anyway for a motherboard, but it is what it is. And then we do have our Gigabyte LAN, so that's pretty standard for, you know, decent connection if you're not wanting to go if you're not wanting to go with a, a separate wi-fi card you can obviously use the inbuilt ethernet here which is nice and then our sort of very basic hd audio jacks here for your headphone microphone and what have you um very very basic io uh I'll put that up to the camera so you can see that a little bit better but yeah it is basic, but it will do the job, and that's the that's the kind of resounding thing I kind of want you to kind of take away from this video. If you are thinking about this board, it will do a job, and if you're on a strict budget, it's going to do what you need it to do. And as long as you're not going with like a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, like a high-end Ryzen, this is going to be good enough. And especially the big plus point, like I said, is the Ryzen 5000. Ryzen 5000 series out of the box that's the big plus point here the fact that you don't have to do a BIOS update so you don't have to muck around with a first or second gen or even third gen Ryzen to actually update it update the BIOS and then having to switch over your CPU it's just it's just put in whatever you what whatever CPU you want will fit you know it will just work straight away first gen up until fifth gen so yeah, I, I really do like that for, for, you know, that's one really good positive of this board. And, you know, it, it, it is it is what it is. It is a very basic budget board, but it's going to get the job done. And if you're wanting to do a very easy flip, this could be the board for you. So I think that basically covers everything that I wanted to say, guys. I hope you like this video. Um, if you do like these overviews, let me know. If you do have any comments on this model board or anything like that, let me know. Um, and obviously, like I say, like the video for the algorithm and subscribe if you want to as well. See future, future videos of me and this channel. And basically, that's all I've got for you today, guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.